Hello and welcome to Palmerston North, the 2020 Secondary School Girls Central Invitational Tournament. Day two, evening two, and a couple of very good games coming your way over the next few hours on Sky Sport Next. Hello and welcome wherever you may be watching from. Justin Nelson and Stacey Lambert with you for our 5.45 game between Fielding High School and there's a fair bit of a story. Good good news story around Fielding High School and they're taking on Queen Margaret College in this Pool A game. Ten teams here competing at Palmerston North as a part of this Central Invitational Tournament. Tomorrow, of course, we get into semi-finals and the grand final. I should let you know that after this game, a little bit later on, strap yourselves in for the evening because... A big, big game coming your way at 7.30 tonight. We'll bring up the day's proceedings. And if you look right down the bottom, you'll see that our 7.30 game this evening is Sacred Heart New Plymouth and St. Peter's in Cambridge. That's a Pool A game as well. The big news there is both of those teams go into that game tonight. It's their final pool game, and they are both unbeaten. So top spot. And the easier crossover, you would say, Stacey, is waiting for the winner out of Pool A. That'll be a big game coming up tonight. But before we get there, we've got Fielding High School and Queen Margaret College as these two teams get prepared to get going. And as I said, Fielding High School is a great story. We'll bring their team list up now on screen and talk a little bit more about Fielding High School. To Toha, Natai, Tariola. Poiser, Davis, Pinder, Kells, Reynolds, Drummond, Smith, Langtree, and Champion. And they're a local school. They're just down the road. Yes, a local school from Fielding, uh, which is uh, just north of Palmerston North. Uh, they've always participated in our competitions here. Um, and this year, this team has actually won the local competition. Um, wasn't expected, so uh, Coach Christopher Vaughan has been doing a great job in developing what is quite a young team. And they've had the call up to come along to the Invitational. So a great opportunity and experience for them. They're actually taking on Queen Margaret, who finished fifth at the Nationals in 2019. There's the team list. Pavihi, Jenkins, Mariner, Doyle. Sapawanga is out of this game. So a late scratch there. Naomi Sapawanga will be missing. Talele, keep an eye on Lily Talele, uh, outstanding young player. Holly Morgan and Lane Goff. So with Sapawanga out, seven players suited up for Queen Margaret College. And that's going to be tough. And despite that, uh, the games I've seen them play, they like to play with a lot of pace. They don't like to play slow, so they like to push the ball, uh, which should hopefully be exciting to watch. There they are there. They're wearing the dark blue singlet with the white shorts. And there's the Fielding High School in their white uniforms for this one. So, so far, Fielding, this is day two, of course. There's two pool games per day for these teams. Fielding High School have lost to St. Peter's, Sacred Heart, New Plymouth, and Sacred Heart, Lower Hutt. Uh, for Queen Margaret, they've had a loss to St. Peter's, a loss to Sacred Heart, New Plymouth, and a win against Sacred Heart, Lower Hutt. 64 to 61, that game I think earlier on today. So they've had a close one today already. One thing that we've seen so far through this competition uh, that's been very impressive, the defensive pressure that these teams put on, and you've just made a good point about it, Stacey, they go hard. They're chasing and chasing and hassling and harassing the whole time trying to force those turnovers. And as we've seen in today's game so far, the teams that can't withstand that pressure and are committing those turnovers... It's opening up opportunities for the teams that are forcing the pressure to uh, to score and score quickly. We've had some big scores in this competition so far. Both teams just about ready to go. What are your thoughts? Well, Queen Margaret's going to have to be the favourites coming into the game here. Um, but it's, uh, it's a game of basketball. We never know what's going to happen. There's Lily Talele wearing the eight, the blue singlet there. Keep an eye on Lily Talele, averaging just over 17 points per game. She'll go in the jump against Sian 
Raldon Poiser. And we're just about ready to go. Get things underway on Sky Sport next. And we're off to a start. Losing the tap, but picking up the ball was Poiser. And they'll get an early shot from the corner. And it drops. What a great start for Fielding. Just the start they wanted from this game. First shot up, first shot down. And you can't hope possibly for a better start than that as Talele misses at the other end. And Fielding harder to the basket with the points. Tariroa, what a great start for the team in white. Got to be happy with that, Stacey. Two oh, for two. Oh, outstanding. I've got a big smile on my face at the moment. Long, deep shot is good for Samantha Jenkins. So Queen Margaret College are also away. The other thing that's been impressive for me today, we've got players who aren't afraid to shoot from downtown. There's some big, big shooters in this competition. They don't worry about that blue line on the floor. To the basket. Wearing the foul and putting the points away. Holly Morgan, she'll go to the line for the extra shot. Good start, both teams. Yeah, very good start. Uh, interesting point you bring up about the three-point shooting and uh, certainly has been a, a big change in today's game. And, and coaches are, are, are recognising that and giving their coaches the confidence and the green light to... to, to to let it go. I've seen plenty, plenty of uh, green light today with our games. No question. Tariora with the shot off the glass. Fielding will get the ball on the inbound. No, it's actually going to go the other way. It'll be Queen Margaret as they look to set up. They're going to have to rotate their team smartly in this game, aren't they, with just the seven players? Yes, absolutely. I think they've actually had pretty much seven players most of the tournament, so it won't be anything strange for them. Um, Let's see what they can do on this occasion. That defense has collapsed. Not sure that the uh, shot got off in time. Doesn't matter anyway. It was a miss from Lily to Lele. Both teams in a zone at the moment, Justin, and uh, fielding in a 1-3-1. One, one. Um... Something their coach said that's uh, new for them at the moment. Shot forced up off the glass. That came from Langtree. Foul is called. Second foul of the game. See, Justin, so many of the fielding players are so young that most of them have only been able to play man-to-man. -man. Yep. So good to see the coaches uh, giving them opportunity to try and understand the principles of playing zone defense. It's looking pretty good so far. Turnover there. May have just stepped back on the line. Uh, Samantha Jenkins. So Fielding with another chance coming forward. Just give me the correct pronunciation of Paige here. Paige Tairoa. 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 Okay. I like the education that comes with sitting in the uh, commentary position with you, Stacey Lambert. It's good. Turnover. Queen Margaret College. Leading this one by one early. Jenkins inside to Lele. Ball on the floor. Had it knocked away. Good defense. And with a chance. Fielding back the other way. That is Tairoa. Been lively early. She's looking good at the moment, isn't she? Averaging 15 points a game so far in the competition. Seems to be carrying injury on that right knee as well. Um. Goff brings the ball in to Doyle, and away we go again. Early in the first quarter, both teams just testing each other out. Stacey's spoken about the defensive setup of both teams. Having a look early. Nice long three. And how was the technique of Samantha Jenkins there? Nice shot. 
Deep one away. Finding some space off the glass. Madeline Pinder couldn't score. And back come Queen Margaret. A little bit too deep for the run of Holly Morgan. Ball out of play. Have seen some excellent shooting today. A couple of players, when they uh, get on a bit of a run, we saw some excellent work from Liana Smith in the last game earlier today from New Plymouth. Hit four threes in the last quarter, and some of those were at least two metres outside the top of the arc. Quite amazing. Finished with a flurry. Nice little floater there from Samantha Jenkins. Beautiful floater. She's had some good touches early as well. Queen Margaret, Margaret open up a six-point lead now. Reaching foul there on Tafirikura Doyle. I think that's her first personal. Something that Queen Margaret are going to have to be mindful of, Stacey. Fouls, personal fouls. Yes. They will need to uh, make sure their defense is straight and clean. That's great transition. Ball ended up with Holly Morgan. Back outside to Jenkins. Can't put it away. Picked up again by Morgan. Back to Jenkins once more. Back to Morgan from the corner for three. In and out. Good rebound underneath Poiser. And away come Fielding. They are going to have to be careful with personal fouls, Queen Margaret, aren't they? Uh, yes, they are. Only two subs on the bench. Madeline Pinder with the deep three for Fielding. Brings it back to within three. Queen Margaret's starting to, starting to realise they passed the ball to that corner. They're getting some free shots. I'm just wondering if Fielding are going to make any adjustment to that. Or just uh, nobody's actually moving out to them at all at the moment. Tairoa. Looked to use the screen, then went the other way. Wasn't a bad decision in the end. Shot didn't miss by too much. Morgan up the floor, Jenkins waiting for the team to settle, picks it up now to Lele. Ends up out in the corner again, they force it inside. Off the glass to Lele, good work. Lane Goff a part of that as well. We've got a timeout called. What was the call there? Did the points count? Uh, yeah, the basket counted and then we had a timeout. So timeout early in this game between Fielding High School and Queen Margaret College. Take us through the coaching staff of these two teams because there's uh, some familiar names in there. Uh, yeah, well, if you're from Wellington, they're very familiar. Junior Hunter, Troy McLean and Walter Tolele. Uh, Troy has, uh, has been a, a first division player uh, representing New Zealand too and he's been uh, involved with the Pathways programs. Yep. Uh, heavily involved in coaching, uh, and I think most of them are involved in the uh, basketball academy down there as well. Um, see a lot of experience there. Uh, for fielding, we have uh, Christopher Vaughan. Now, he was coaching uh, very successfully too with uh, Tararua College, another school. Um, so he's had a lot of success. So he's doing some really good things here in Palmerston North. And Coach Polra Pomare, uh, he's a uh, been a keen basketball supporter and fan for many years and uh, been uh, actually him and myself coached many little junior rep teams together so oh, good on you. he's having to go with the girls now Mario Bryan is the manager for Fielding High School we're talking about Fielding earlier on today um, Stacey tell, tell us a little bit about the uh, the little town up the road uh, not too far away from here. It's about a 20-minute drive. Tell us a little bit about that region of New Zealand. It's a little small town with uh, a lot of large farming community. Uh, a lot of people commute to Palmerston North, and likewise, people could commute from Palmerston North over over to Fielding. Um, so, really, can't really separate us. Really, we're we're, we're all one and. One and the same thing. That's what we like to hear. Might have just been a reaching foul there for Lily to Lele. That's her first personal foul. 
Just the second team foul on Queen Margaret. That'll be something we keep an eye on. Just the seven players for Queen Margaret. As they go into this zone now, long shot, or was it a pass in the end? May have been a pass in the end. Picked off. And Queen Margaret come forward. They finished fifth in the Nationals last year, Queen Margaret. Had a really good run, went deep. Obviously a little bit of a different setup in 2020 with all the interruptions. There's a very deep shot coming from uh, Samantha Jenkins. A couple of fouls creeping into this game. Look, I think any time that you come, you come fifth of the tournament, you've normally finished on quite a high and, and never really know how well you could have done because you've dropped that quarterfinal, yep, haven't yep, you? Yeah, yeah. And then you've gone through and won your next two games. So, um, yeah, they're they're a good team. Madeline Despite Pinder, despite being under um, a little underpowered at the moment, Pinder puts both away, brings Fielding back to within three. So a good start for them. They've found points hard to come by so far in this competition. Excellent basket to Ferrycura Doyle. They've just scored the 22 against St. Peter's, 46 against Sacred Heart New Plymouth, and 39 against Sacred Heart Lower Hutt. So scoring has been a little bit hard to come by, but they have started well here. And Paige Teiroa, has been a big part of that in this opening quarter. She's about to go to the line for another two shots. She started well. Some substitutions for both teams. Just under three minutes to go in this opening quarter. What have you made of Paige's game so far, Stacey? Good, she's looking to be aggressive offensively. Um, she needs to be the person to create for her team. Um, Look for her to continue to do some more of that. And she'll get it back here. Get your own offensive rebound. <laughs> yeah, it's a good start. Here's Pavihi into the game. Nice little basket spinning off the glass for Lily Talele. And that lead out to six. Again, driving hard on the basket page. Teiroa gets it back again, goes up. Can't put it away to Lele. Ball on the floor from the big power forward. And a foul. We'll They've been really getting back in numbers, aren't they? They are. Pavihi will go to the line for a couple of shots. Last game we saw here at Palmerston North featured uh, Wellington East. And one thing I was really impressed with from their game is their offensive transition. They gave away a lot of height to New Plymouth, but every time they got the ball, they went and they ran in numbers. They spread the floor really well. They ran the lanes really well. And they got a lot of offensive transition points and ended up going on and having a, a big win earlier on by about 30 points. But it was a key part of their game, pushing the ball up the floor. And we saw a little bit of it just then from Queen Margaret. Deep shot. Too far for Tiaroa. Again, quick ball up the floor from Queen Margaret. Maybe a foul there. No, ball out of play. And Queen Margaret to bring it in. They're out by eight. Quick play, ball comes in to Lele, turn around, looked at the jumper, couldn't put it away, champion with the rebound. Loose ball, no. Finally, well, finally getting control of it was to Toha, but well done by Lily to Lele to win it back for Queen Margaret. She gets it now inside, trying to find some room. Couldn't put it away, great hustle underneath by Mariner. Fielding, forward, in the end. The shot goes up and goes in for Madeline Pinder. It's a little bit unconventional. Yeah, she lost the handle on the way up, but I uh, regathered it without traveling. Uh, great finish. To Lele, three players she draws to her. 
Hands it off to Doyle, back to Talele. Set for that jumper. Misses. Rebound Carly Champion, may have been fouled. Just hanging in there fielding. Oh, they're doing a great job. Both teams are in the bonus now. So we'll see the ball brought from one end of the floor to the other. Now, coming up later tonight, Stacey, I want your opinion on this. Because everyone's talking this game up tonight. Sacred Heart College, New Plymouth. This is 7.30 tonight on Sky Sport Next. Sacred Heart College, New Plymouth, taking on St. Peter's School, Cambridge. And we know the talent of St. Peter's. We've seen it for years on the national stage. Both teams go in, three and zip. What are your thoughts? Look, to be honest, I haven't seen Secret Sacred Heart College New Plymouth play. I've only heard. So, um, but I have seen St. Peter's, and they look really sharp and really well-oiled against Queen Margaret. Um, look, it'd be too hard to, to, to pick. Uh, I'll just make sure I'm watching. And have you been impressed so far with Mount uh, Monganui as well? Oh, yeah, very impressed with, with, with their team. Um, speaking with their coach, Robert Tuilave, they haven't, they're a very young team as well, and he hasn't had as much time as he would like with them, so they've decided to really just focus on a few things rather than be good at a lot. And one of those was their half-court man-to-man defense. Um, he doesn't like, they're not looking at trapping and pressing too much. Um, so very impressed with their, their defensive uh, principles on man-to-man. Excellent shooting there from Lily Talele at the line, putting both away for Queen Margaret. They hold a seven-point lead deep in this first quarter. Tairawa couldn't put it away. Putting the pressure on now, though, trying to force a turnover. Doyle finds a way through, and away they go. Mariner ran into a brick wall. Solid defense by Poiser. She's got some teammates there to help her out, though. And they add another two points. Inside the last 10 seconds of this opening quarter. Paige Toiroa, who has had an excellent first quarter, missed the shot. But as we've been accustomed to seeing the first 10 minutes, she was the first one to come up with the ball as well off her own missed shot. So quarter time here. Queen Margaret College, 23, leading fielding. 14 and in general Stacey Lambert it was an entertaining first quarter oh, it was indeed it was an enjoyable first quarter uh, Fielding came out with a hiss and a roar uh, they certainly the defense certainly flattened out a little bit in towards the, the later last few minutes of the end of that quarter um, and they'll need to do a little bit better job in keeping them under at least under 20 points a quarter if they want to stay close uh, a few shots from Paige she's uh Looks like Paige, Tairoa and Maddie, Madeline Pinder are going to be carrying a lot of the workload offensively. Um, so, yeah, let's let's see how they go. What are the messages here at quarter time? Junior Hunter to Queen Margaret. He'd have to be reasonably happy with that first quarter. Yeah, other than possibly the foul trouble. Um, especially if they like to play with pace. They don't want to be fouling and slowing down and putting the other team on the line. Um. Yeah, to uh, continue to keep the pressure on. Um, the defense does look like it's starting to, to loosen up a little bit uh, for them to continue to attack offensively. And what about Chris Vaughan just there on camera with Fielding High School? Yeah, he'd have to be happy with that start. Um, I mean, Paige has missed quite a few shots that possibly would have normally gone down so you know this game could even be a little bit closer they must be very happy with the with the with the boxing out they haven't let a lot of uh, second chance opportunities go and they've been very good at getting back in transition so second quarter not far away from starting on sky sport next big thanks to basketball new zealand uh, NTEC, Basketball Manawatu, Sport Manawatu and Palmerston North City Council all for helping us put on the Central Invitational Tournament. Of course, our partners at Inspire, Glory League and Moulton as well. For all the latest news for the tournaments being played 
around the country at the moment, www.nz.basketball or right across social media at Basketball NZ. Quick start in the second quarter, Queen Margaret. Pavihi with that long outside shot. They'll get another opportunity to do some damage here. They lead by nine for three. Samantha Jenkins, who's been lively, couldn't put it away. To Toha, getting it up the floor, out to that wing, where Pinder had another look from deep. Couldn't score. Back come the team in blue, hard to the basket. Tia Pavihi draws the foul, and she'll go to the line for a couple. Unlucky there, Sian Rowden poiser She's, uh, she's been doing a great job at getting across on the help side. Hands straight up. Um, and as always in basketball, normally if you've got the ball and you're being aggressive, you get rewarded. Now I must say the sun was out today in Palmerston North again. That's a couple of days in a row, Stacey. What's ah. going on? Oh, I, it's I nice. Have, I have to confess, I had a little, little siesta this afternoon little nap. in the sun. <laughs> Very nice. So I was listening to your commentary on the second game. Oh, were you? <laughs> Here's a chance for Fielding again. Madeline Pinder just out on that wing, finding her spot. Couldn't finish. Great transition. Basketball from Queen Margaret. And Tia Pavihi will go back to the line for another two. So... They've definitely shown their hand here, Queen Margaret. You've spoken about it a couple of times, Stacey. They love to push the ball. And we're seeing the results of that right now. Fielding need to be aware that it's on nearly every time. They are getting back in numbers. Uh, they, so they've just got to look at been in a better position to deflect those passes when they're kicking ahead. And but two fouls early on, they need to be careful. And just not making fielding pay for those indiscretions at the moment from the foul line, missing some free throws. That lead sits at 11, and it's just a bit of a precarious position at the moment in this game, isn't it? Because We've seen some good things so far from fielding, but they're 11 down, and you just get the feeling that if they can't land a couple of offensive blows here, Queen Margaret may get away from them. There they go again. Pavihi sitting back waiting for it, handing it off to the run of Holly Morgan there in support, and another two. Jump ball called here, or is it a foul? Two referees will just have a quick chat. I'm fairly sure they'll sort that out pretty quick. It's going to be a foul is called. And Fielding will bring it in from the sideline. Needing a score right now. Lead sits at 13. What can they do from the wing? Again, under a little bit of pressure inside. There's a lot of plays in there. Champion couldn't put the shot away. And once more, Queen Margaret. Just look like they've got space, don't they, when they come down the floor? Can they use it? Pavihi finds some space. Under pressure, rebounding it off her own shot. Draws another foul. Three, three fouls early there. Substitution for uh, Fielding. Just holding up play for a moment. Let's see what they can do off the baseline here. It's been a good start. Good start to the second quarter. It's been a four-zip start. Again, another long look and another good shot. Samantha Jenkins, she's not afraid to fire from outside, is she? That was deep. Seen a couple from Jenkins so far in this game. Speaking of deep, Ooh. that is just as deep. Was that Paige? Paige Tyler again. She had a quick one-minute breather. Back <laughs> into the game. Back in. That was excellent. 
We might uh, pull up a replay on that in a moment. Just have a look how far out it was. It's been a bit of a competition so far today at the deepest threes. Have a look at that. That's impressive. Can you nail them from that far out? No. <laughs> we weren't allowed to shoot them from there when I played. <laughs> Mariner at the line. This is the first. 13-point margin. Actually, I'm not sure. We had a three-point line when I played. Oh, it's that long ago, is it? <laughs> that is a long time ago. Wow. Kids these days wouldn't understand that, would they? Mm. We used to have the uh, the laneway lines going off on an angle, remember? Oh, that's right. The keyhole. The key, that's the right. Key. That, that's exactly right. Oh, nice little pass, Morgan looking for Pavihi. She may have been fouled there. It used to really be hard to dunk in back in those days from outside the lane. From outside, <laughs> you're right. That required one big leap, didn't it? <laughs> Tia Pavihi at the line again. She's, we've seen a lot of Tia Pavihi at the line in this quarter. This would be her third or fourth trip this quarter. I think it's her third at least. Puts the first away. Well, they're going to be shooting on the line for the next seven minutes if there's any more fouls from fielding. Yeah, it's a long time, isn't it? Has a look at the second. Just off to the left. Got a great camera view of that. And fielding still trying to close this gap. Just finding some trouble to Toha. Nice little floater there. Tairoa. That she, deep three set her up, didn't it, for the for the up fake and the and the little pull up. She's really holding them in this game at the moment, mm. offensively. Getting the points on the board. A nice little jumper from inside the foul line for Mariner. Good technique. Nice finish. 33 plays 19. Very, very wide at the moment. Queen Margaret's really forcing Fielding to play wide offensively. They force the turnover. It's been a 10-5 run in the second quarter so far to Queen Margaret. Mariner drawing some plays, goes out to the corner. Deep shot, may have been Jenkins back out there again. Fielding come up with possession. I always like it as a coach when I see teams start to pressure, start to pick up the pressure. You just seem to have more options if you, you can counter than if they're sagging off in the middle. Deep shot from the wing coming from Madeline Pinder. Shooting just over eight points a game so far at the Central Invitational Tournament. Ten teams, two pools of five. By the end of tonight, we'll know where those teams finish in each pool, one to five. And the top two teams in each pool will cross over and play in semi-finals tomorrow morning. So that's one versus two and two versus one, so to speak, pool A to pool B. And then, of course, it gets through to a grand final tomorrow evening, I believe it is. Tomorrow evening, does that sound right? I think yes. that's right. In fact, 7.30, I think. I'll give you the details no, right now. I think it's going to be 4.45 coming up tomorrow. That, Yep, that'll be the grand final. So... We do have to start at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, though, Stacey. Are you on that early game? But I told you I'm already an early bird, so <laughs> oh, that's, that's, right. that's not did, a problem. We'll be up early, too. won't we? You might be doing that game by yourself. 33-19 <laughs> as we've got a timeout. Let's have a quick look at what's coming up after this game because if you like your hoops, you need to stick with us because this game coming up at 7.30 tonight is going to be well worth Settling back with a cup of tea and watching. 7.30 tonight on Sky Sport Next. Sacred Heart, New Plymouth, taking on St. Peter's School of Cambridge. Both of those teams at the moment are three and zip. So they are battling for top spot in Pool A. That game coming up 7.30 tonight. Be a bit of fun. Looking forward to that. 
Here's Queen Margaret College. Quick chat, just the seven players suited up for Queen Margaret College. And sometimes that works in your favor uh, with some of the action we've seen earlier today. Wellington East, just the eight players. Sometimes when you've got smaller numbers, tighter rotations, everybody having to go out there and do a job. Oh, nice shot. Another long shot from the wing from Samantha Jenkins. Hasn't she started well in this game? Yeah, sometimes it can work in your favour, can't it, Stacey? When you've got those less numbers. Yeah, yeah, it gives you gives you less options as, as a coach. And as long as you don't have any foul trouble or any injuries, um, I mean, in a close game, you're probably not wanting to go deeper than eight or nine in your rotations. Um, so it does make it easier. And I suppose that... Uh, the responsibility is, is taken upon those eight players that they need to do it together. Leads at 17 after that last Samantha Jenkins make. She's been very impressive from range. Speaking of impressive from range, was that Paige uh, Tairoa uh, Ty again, was it? Indeed it was. Very good. And guess who's going from range again back the other way? Samantha Jenkins coming up short on that occasion. 36 plays, 22. Four and a half minutes gone, or four and a half minutes to go in this second quarter. Drawing a foul is Madeline Pinder. And she'll have a look at a couple of shots here. She's been creative. Has an outside presence as well. She's put up some long shots, but not afraid to put the ball on the floor as we saw on that occasion. This is the first. I hope to see them continue to do that and keep putting pressure on, on the Queen Margaret defense. See if they can get to the line a little more. Pinder for the second, makes it. Chops that lead back by one. Sits at 13. Havihi uses the screen. They swing the ball well out to Jenkins. Jenkins inside. Talele is fouled. I think that'll be on Sophie Langtree. And that will put Lily Talele to the line for a couple of shots. Yeah, she moves really well around, around the keyhole, doesn't she? And uh, a really key principle there, I can hear my coach Joe Frost from when I was at high school. Uh, to beat a zone, you know, get in behind the zone, get behind it, get the ball down there, make cuts behind there. Can't capitalise. Makes the first, misses the second. For Lily to Lele. Tairoa. Oh, again, she goes from deep. She's been a lot of fun to watch so far in this game. Not afraid to fire her away. Gets a lot of oh, offensive rebounds for a guard as well. Turnover on that occasion. Pavihi comes up with it. Out to Jenkins. Inside to the run of Mariner. Excellent basket by Queen Margaret. Good teamwork between those players. Beautiful pass to the trailer. 16 points. Tairoa gets it up to Pinder off the front of the ring. Rebound, Sophie Langtree, and she's been fouled. So she'll go to the line now for a couple of shots. Both teams in the bonus now. As we head down towards halftime, Pool A game. If you've just joined us for the Central Invitational Tournament on Sky Sport Next, 10 teams competing here. Of course... The secondary school nationals were cancelled for this year. But we do have a number of invitational tournaments running at the moment. This being one of them. Ten teams here in the Central Invitational. We've also seen some basketball being played between secondary schools in Hamilton and also Tiaraha. Nice little jumper there from... Holly Morgan. And there's some...
Big basketball action to come in the back end of this year as well. The under-15 and under-17 Aon Nationals still to come later in October. And also, we've got the Schick 3x3 Cup coming up from Invercargill, November 12 to 14. And the Cells NBL Women, the 18 in 18 competition from November 19. So plenty more basketball to come at the back end of 2020. And I think everybody's just thankful to have it back out there. How does the 1818 work? Is that do they all go to Auckland like they did with the Sales NBL, or is it? Guess who just hit another big three, by the way? Page title. Oh, it's been very, very <laughs> good. Uh, yeah, so we haven't announced the uh, the location just yet. Speaking of three, Samantha Jenkins has been just as good down the other way. Um, it will be based in one location, six teams. Everybody plays each other once. Then we go to semi-finals and final. And effectively what that is is 18 games in 18 nights. So one game every night, 7.30 p.m., live on Sky Sport. Our elite level athletes playing in the Cells NBL women's competition. And it's going to be great to have those players back out there on, on court and competing just the same as what the, uh, the men did at the uh, showdown in Auckland in uh, June and July this year. So I think it, a lot of people are looking forward to it, Stacey. Oh, it's great to uh, showcase our amazing female athletes that we have here in New Zealand. Good block there by Samantha Jenkins. It's been a great battle between those two players. Paige Teroa and Samantha Jenkins. 46-26 though, the score. That lead out to 20 now for Queen Margaret. Loose ball on the inbound pass. Talele picks it up. Good handles. Pavihi from Jenkins couldn't put it away. It's a battle on the rebound. And we'll see which way the possession arrow goes. It'll be a fielding ball. Great job there, Bethany Smith, putting her body on the line, tearing down that rebound. Things just feeling like they're really starting to loosen and open up a bit now. Someone yelling out shooter from the sidelines and yelling it out for good reason as well. And I just got my third rebound. Did quite well there. There's Tia Pavihi. One way, then the other, and over and back violation there. Samantha Jenkins jumping from the backcourt, catching in the front. So inside the last minute, fielding with a chance here to try and bridge this 20-point gap. Central Ener Energy Trusts Arena here in Palmerston North. Nice block, Lily Talele. And off they go again, stepping one way, then the other. Holly Morgan couldn't finish. Got number advantage here, Fielding, and they'll use oh. it, will they, for two? No, Poison couldn't put it away. Goff with the rebound. Oh, bit of a skip there in the middle of the court. From Holly Morgan. Here's Goff. Down into the corner, Pavihi with the shot. Just shooting over the top. And Paige Teroa again there to mop it up, fouled, and she'll go to the line. Got to be impressed with her game in the first half. She's been everywhere. Very nuggety, eh? Just offensive rebounds. Tenacious. She, shooting threes, dribbling the middle pulling up floaters. I've seen her cut and post up before, and mm. she just dropped the pass, but we were about to see a post move too. Averaging 15 points a game coming into this one. And she'd probably nearly be at her average at the first half here. Second one doesn't roll in to Lele with the rebound. 16 seconds to go. Samantha Jenkins just pulls it out. Calls up the screen from Goff. Goes from deep. She's landed a few of them in this first half. Goff with the rebound. Pavihi off the glass. 
three chances there in the last 16 seconds. They couldn't put any of them away. And at half time, Queen Margaret, 46, are leading Fielding High School, 26. It was a 23 to 12 second quarter for Queen Margaret. As they take a break, we will do the same, Stacey and return very, very shortly to Central Energy Trusts Arena here in Palmerston North, Pool A game. It's Queen Margaret leading Fielding High School. We'll be back right after this on Sky Sport Next. Putting on the black singlet was a dream come true. I've dreamed about playing for New Zealand since I was a little girl. Very nervous, but also very proud, you know. It's a huge thing. Representing all of those at home, all of those that have helped you, getting you to all those early morning trainings, feeding you all that dinner. You know, we're used to punching above our own weight, so I think we try to incorporate that in practice and just go as hard as we can on the court and off court, it's all love. On the court, um, you know, we've always got each other's backs, but if we need to hold each other accountable, we will. Um, and then off the court, same thing. We're still a family, got each other's backs, and obviously it's a bit more fun. I think basketball was such an appealing sport to me, seeing the pathways to the US. So I remember growing up looking at Zara Gillings and Panina Davidson and seeing what they were doing. So I've always wanted to head over to the States, not only to live the basketball dream, but um, to get a degree, to see a different side of the world and to learn a different style of play. It's just good to be out here with the, with the younger kids and give back to the game because we're, we're here to kind of inspire, inspire the youth of New Zealand and especially, especially all the girls out here. It's great to see uh, you know, them all having fun and just spreading the love of the game. Uh, basketball has given me so much. I mean, it's given me the tall foods. I mean, you know, it's given, me, it's given me friends for life. It's given me a family. It's the opportunity for me to have received a really great education in America. Um, so now I'm able to get my undergraduate degree and a master's degree. The opportunity to travel to, you know, Japan, Taiwan, all those places. Playing the sport I love, still playing with the tall ferns. The opportunities are one of the best part of being, you know, a uh, tall fern and being a part of basketball. I'd love for the younger ones to be like, oh my gosh, I want to be a part of that someday. Um, obviously there's so many people wanting to play basketball, but if that's something that they're aspiring to be like, that would be awesome too. I think New Zealand's known as such a sporting nation and the basketball scene is growing so rapidly that I want the tour fans to be something these young kids are aspiring to. So they want to say, I grew up to be an all black, but I grew up to be a tall fan. Um, and for them right here to come out and practice and say like, yeah, I love basketball. This is a fun sport, a sport I can be with my friends, a sport where I see a lot of opportunity and a lot of pathways because at the end of the day, basketball can take you places. And so the tour fans is a great route for that. For me, I'm just super proud every time I step out onto the court, knowing I'm wearing that black singlet because as a tall fern, um, you've got a lot of pride and playing for your country, having your sister's back. Um, definitely proud to wear that singlet every time I step out on the court. Welcome back to Central Energy Trust Arena here in Palmerston North. It is the 2020 Secondary School Girls Central Invitational Tournament. Justin Nelson and Stacey Lambert with you. Halftime, Pool A, day two. Queen Margaret College leading Fielding High School 46 to 26. They've opened up a 20 point margin after being up by nine at quarter time. Some good advertising there. Girls got game, wonderful program right across New Zealand. Getting girls into basketball. And uh, talking about it earlier today, lots of girls here in Palmerston North are getting into basketball. The numbers continue to increase. I know there's a real desire from this part of the world to have a team in the National League in the future. Of course, they've got the Jets, Manawatu Jets, playing in the Selves NBL in the men's competition, hopefully not too far away from having a women's team at the national level as well. Very, very popular sport right across New Zealand, but also especially here in Palmerston North. Half time, 20 point lead to Queen Margaret College. Stacey, what are your thoughts on the first half? 
Well, Queen Margaret are just slowly and slowly edging away, slowly showing their dominance. Um, and uh, really, if you if you're Chris Vaughan, you've got to be got to be happy with the start. Um, and really, what do you do to keep your girls motivated and, and working hard? Um, could be in danger of blowing out here. Second half underway. And it starts with a long shot from Samantha Jenkins. Let's pull that one up. We might have a look at that one again because that is literally inside the first eight or nine seconds. What a great three-pointer. We probably don't need to see the highlights. We've seen enough of those already uh, this game so far from wow. Samantha Jenkins. What a start for her. Well, she just looked at her defender, it just backed off and just decided, you're not going to respect me, I'm going to shoot it. Well, they need to get and out to her. Again. There she is again, you're right. That one wasn't too far away. Great rebound by Lily to Lele, and she'll go to the line for a couple. Yeah, you would think definitely after the first half of seeing Samantha Jenkins put away, what, four of those? You'd say there may have been a conversation at some stage. And she's come out to start the second half and just nailed the first one within seconds. I think that's quite a young mistake. Young a uh, mistake young players make. They 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 feel like they're in front of the player and they have them covered, but the hand's not up. They're not covered. She's got a break in play for a moment. Gives us a chance to send a cheerio and thanks out to all of the volunteers and score table officials and referees who are helping put this competition on school holidays of course at the moment isn't it it is indeed I know it's been a while since you've been at school but it is school holidays <laughs> at the moment isn't it every day's been a is. holiday for me this year while I've been on study leave unfortunately it's been a uh, extended break for a lot of people in a lot of uh, walks of life. As we've mentioned a couple of times though, it is great to have basketball back. I know just the pleasure and listening to these players as they've walked around the stadium. They're just thrilled to be back out there playing again in 2020. Nice hands inside there by Madeline Pinder, stripping the ball for fielding. Yes, everything that's happened this year certainly made you think and appreciate what's important in life. And uh, appreciating the physical activities we do and our love for this game. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I know, uh, you know, back in my hometown in, in Melbourne, Australia, it's uh, been a really challenging time for, for family and friends back there. And it certainly makes you appreciate all of the things that we have here in New Zealand and probably more so the really strong community feel and the family and the whanau and just everybody pulling in the same direction and it has been a challenging time but it's also led to just a real increase in the way the community has come together and worked together, hasn't it? It's um, It's been good to see. Fifty-one twenty-six, early in the second half. A chance here for Fielding and another big basket. Madeline Pinder has shown a couple of times also that she can put those long baskets away. If you love your outside shooting, there's been some good highlights here from both teams. <laughs> and another going. one as well. Good work. I think that may have been Holly Morgan. There she is, picking off the cross-court pass. She might add another two here. She goes all the way off the glass, can't put it away. Rebound to Taha. Another shot from deep. We're seeing a lot of that at the moment in this game. Jenkins, ball on the floor. Good pass inside from Morgan. Excellent finish by Lane Goff. 
Queen Margaret sharing the ball around. Good team effort. Just the seven players. Pinder again for three. Couldn't put it away. Totoha had it and lost it. Morgan working in tandem with Doyle. And another two points off the glass. Once again, Queen Margaret showing their desire to push the ball offensively. Travel called. And it will be a Queen Margaret ball. Samantha Jenkins not taking a backward step at all. Still putting pressure as the ball is being brought up the court and rewarded with a with a turnover in favour for her team. Holly Morgan to Doyle. Hands it off. Nice little move underneath by Doyle to hand it off to, to Lele. Teoroa up the floor to Toha. One way, then the other. Puts it up and puts it in. I'm not sure she uh, quite knew which way to go there, but it ended up working. Tatiana Totoha landing the basket for Fielding. Here's Jenkins again. Long shot misses. Look out. Good pass. Totoha couldn't finish it off, but she'll give the opportunity straight back to Paige Taroa who finishes the shot. And uh, I think you called it a couple of minutes ago, Stacey. This game has opened right up, hasn't it? Yeah. Jenkins for three. Another one. I, I look, I like this Jenkins girl. They're up 30 points, and she's just not playing any different. She's just doing her business. She's She knows what she's good at, and she's going out there and doing it. Holly Morgan again, just trying to get the steal in the lane. Here she is again, Samantha Jenkins. There's a replay of that last shot. We've seen that six times tonight. <laughs> it's been a few. Hasn't disappointed from range, that's for sure. She's not rushing anything, though. One thing you see when somehow players make two or three shots, then they all of a sudden start taking silly shots. Now she looks settled, doesn't she? Every yeah. time, feet planted, squared up to the basket. Fundamentally very, very good. Good for uh, younger players to look at and watch. She can't keep it in on that occasion. 61-33, back end of the third quarter. Don't forget, coming up after this game, 7.30 tonight on Sky Sport Next. Just strap yourself in. Boil that kettle. Hot chocolate tea. What's your go-to uh, in the evening? Well, I'm not going to lie. It's going to be a. It's going to be a, um, a tuatara. A tuatara <laughs> pilsner. Right. What kind of hot chocolate's that? <laughs> St Peter's School taking on Sacred Heart College, New Plymouth tonight. Both teams three and zero at the Central Invitational Tournament. So that is a big one coming up tonight, as those two teams battle it out for top spot in Pool A. And of course that gives them the more favourable matchup on the crossover. We have a timeout here. Queen Margaret 61 leading Fielding High School 33. And then of course finals tomorrow. So it's a three day competition this year. Finals on day three. Let's have a look at what's coming up on finals day. Saturday in Palmerston North. There we go. There's our coverage. Semi-final at 8 a.m. Who did that schedule? <laughs> Was that Connor O'Fee that did that schedule? What are you doing to us? Semi-final at 9.45 a.m. Third and fourth playoff at 3 p.m. And then the grand final at 4.45. No breaks there. You're going to be a busy man, Justin. Yeah, it's going to be a busy morning and busy afternoon, but it will be the business end, and I'm looking forward to it. From what I've seen so far, and it's always hard with tournaments, you don't know which way they're going to go, but I definitely like uh, Mount Monganui in Pool B. Uh, I did see Rotorua earlier today. They, they were good, played very, very well, and Wellington East with just the eight players. Mm. 
like the way they go about it. Their pressure up the floor is a, a really good sign of a, a team that gets after it. And then we're going to know a lot more about Pool A later tonight with St. Peter's School and Sacred Heart College, New Plymouth. I think we've probably talked about the three or four top teams there and where a winner may come from. I'll tell you who else has been impressive to watch. Really enjoyed watching Paige Tairaroa. I've mispronounced her name about 400 times, but that's okay. She'll forgive me. I'm learning my way. <laughs> I'm sure I've got it right once or twice in all of those efforts. Almost every time Fielding have come out of a timeout, they've come out and just been really, really, you can just notice the focus has changed. So, um, which is the sign of, saying in there? But we, which is the sign of a good team, isn't mm. it? You go in, you listen, you take the instruction on board, you get out and you execute. I think as a, as a coach, you know, Chris Vaughan would just be looking for longer periods of that concentration and execution, wouldn't he? Yeah. They come forward again. Langtree. Ball inside. Turnaround off the glass by Siana Poisa. Puts it away for another two. So they have come out of that timeout with a little bit of a flurry. To Lele, turns around, jumper on that baseline from the short corner, missed everything. One of those shots where you're too open. Tairoa wearing some contact, no foul called. To Toha, had it and lost it. To Morgan, back the other way, finds some space, gets over to the left. Nice little finish off that left hand. She did a Euro step like that in the, in the, in the first half, didn't she? Yep. 63 plays, 37, back end of the third. I wonder whose little brother that is down in the corner, paying, paying <laughs> very close attention to the game. What was he doing? Got the game right there in front of him. He's someone, drawing up a play for the next play. <laughs> someone's younger coach. brother right down there at the end of the stadium. There he is. <laughs> He's enjoying the game, he hasn't seen a thing. <laughs> oh. He'll enjoy the screen time when he watches it back. Here's Jenkins to Lele. Oh, well, she tried to pass it there to Doyle. Problem is she passed it to where Doyle was, not where she was going. What have you made of this third quarter Stacey, I can tell you that it has been a 17 to 11 quarter for Queen Margaret. Again, just this, this every quarter it looks like we're looking about a 9 or 10 point deficit that they're just slowly pulling away. So, Which is, you know, four or five baskets. That's a big shot there from Tatiana to Toha. Deep three off the glass. Yeah, you're talking four or five shots. Over 10 minutes each quarter, that's been the difference, hasn't it? Problem is, if those four or five shots are in the hands of Samantha Jenkins, they're usually four or five threes. To Lele, nice basket driving in on the left. Good finish. To Toha, hands it off to Poiser. Couldn't make the basket. It's a battle. Rennell is in there for fielding. Coming up with it and getting it back. Doyle will go all the way to the basket for another two. That lead sitting at 27 inside the last couple of minutes of this third. Couple of steps there. She just banked another one. That's <laughs> twice the bank's been open for Tatiana to Toha. One from the left, one from the right. I think that's eight points for her this quarter. I don't think she had even shot it in the rest of the first half. Well, it doesn't matter how you get the points if they're dropping. Keep taking Oh, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Samantha Jenkins, we've seen her drop some long, deep shots so far in this game. That one was quite ambitious. True yep. to form, Totoha went off the glass again. Missed on the... 
third occasion, having put the last two away. Well done by Talele to uh, hand it off there to Jenkins. 69-43. Quarter to go in this game. Big top of the table clash in pool eight. They're all having a crack at it now. Why not? <laughs> Poiser getting in on the act. Nearly put it away too. As Madeline Pinder with an easy basket for Fielding. I think this game is uh, in for an interesting finish over the next 10 minutes. Can I say that? Am I allowed to say that, Stacey Lambert? I, I tried to just... Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're looking a little flat at the moment. No doubt about it. Rebound Mariner. Jenkins. And that'll be it for the third quarter. So 71 plays 45. Three-quarter time, Queen Margaret against Fielding. And I think it's fair to say that certainly in the last few minutes of that quarter, defense probably went out the window. <laughs> Everybody getting their shots up. A very difficult task for both coaches right now. Both teams are looking quite exhausted. Um, yeah, I wonder what Troy's going to say to them right now. <laughs> Great opportunity, though, for these teams to get away for a few days during school holidays. I know uh, in our accommodation, not too far from here, we have a, a team staying there. And, you know, you, you, you hear the... The, the players out running around and having barbecues and you know doing the team things that teams do on the on the road and um, it's just good to hear that laughter back out there you know to hear them um, enjoying being away from home for a few days with mm. their teammates and uh, I'm sure you spent many times as a, as a player and a coach away at tournaments it is a very special time for the players isn't it well you just have to look at some of the some of the coaching staff that are here and, and all of them have some kind of connection from when they either played or or were younger um so it's uh i guess it's it's, it's always we get, we get wound up in winning and, and competitiveness mm. but really there's only ever one team that can win um to say that attending tournaments aren't aren't meaningful for for all the other teams would be silly so it's uh it's it's a lot of life lessons are learned on, on these tournaments and, and, and when when you look back at your school days these are the times when you remember no most fondly. Yeah, no doubt about and it. And some of the relationships you have uh, last last a lifetime. Yeah, very well said. So a quarter to go in this one. Queen Margaret headed for victory. Added 25 points in that third quarter to 19 for fielding. Again, it's just that four or five baskets proving to be the difference. We'll have a look at that finals schedule again in a moment. Somebody just sent me a message through asking about finals tomorrow. We'll bring that up for you in a moment so you can see what's on the menu tomorrow. You can set your clock, set your day. And if you want to see some finals basketball on Sky Sport next, we've got plenty of it coming your way tomorrow. So grab a pen and paper, and we'll have that information for you in a moment as Mariner opens up the last quarter with a nice but a tough basket inside. Made it look a little bit easier than what it was in the end. Poiser. Couldn't finish. And now away they come. Queen Margaret. Tia Pavihi. Goff into the corner, Morgan inside, and there she is by herself again, Mariner. Couldn't finish on the left on that occasion. Poises played some very good defense in there, really changed a lot of shots. Well, she's going to have another go here from outside. Feeling new to the game of basketball is uh, Sian. They don't get any shorter though, do they, Stacey? So she might well only be sick, uh, like year 10 or yep. if at most a year 11. 
I've, I've seen her play touch too. You should see her running down on the wing. <laughs> we, were, we were talking about this earlier today. One of the things that we don't know uh, in our commentary position is just the age of all of these players. And quite often when they come to this level of competition, you can have that mixture of school age, can't you? Whether it's you know year 11, year 12, year 13. And quite often we'll see players uh, a year apart as you get to the Nationals. And they do actually end up coming here, you know, two, three times. And you see that development year mm. after year. You know, no doubt we've seen players here today that we will see, hopefully, with what returns to a full Nationals in 2021. Loose ball. Morgan keeps it in. Good effort in the end. Mariner with a... <laughs> What was an off-balance shot from deep? Wasn't too far away in the end. To Toha, to Pinda, Pinda with the mid-range look. Misses. Holly Morgan, been very good, Holly Morgan. I've liked watching her play this game. Both ends, plays both ends. Mm. Tia Pavihi is fouled and she'll go to the line and take a couple of looks. What have you made of the Queen Margaret team in this game? Finished fifth at the Nationals last year. What have you made of this team so far over the opening couple oh, of days? They're a sound team, clearly showing um, that they're the superior team on the day here. Um, Well, they're going to finish the pool play at two and two. You would think that they will just miss the semi-finals. Yes. Yes. I think a good experience for them, though. They're also uh, quite young, despite being fifth last year. I was talking with Troy McLean before the game. And uh, there's quite a few young players. As is the fielding team. Um, I'd like to see the fielding team in another year or two. I think they'll definitely gain from the experience of being here. Holly Morgan brings it in. Pavihi back to Morgan in the corner. Good setup. Just a little bit short on the deep corner shot. Tatiana to Toha. Brings the ball up. Just an errant pass there from Bethany Smith. And the ball will land back with Queen Margaret one more time. Just any time that Fielding's come up with an answer, uh, come up with something good, Queen Margaret have just followed up with an answer. Um, yeah, they've played very composed. Speaking of Queen Margaret, they had one of their players, here's Morgan for three, they had one of their players make the uh, tournament team last year at the Nationals from Queen Margaret College, Paris Lokatui. So some added success there. Got a chance to add to their score now, Queen Margaret. Moving the ball around off the glass. Tafiri Kura Doyle. And they move that scoreboard along to 76, out by 31 points now. We've seen some big margins today, Stacey. When these games have opened up, they've opened right up, haven't they? Yeah, they have. Especially with an invitation team, you never... Actually, there have been some, some odd games, haven't there? With some large... Large point differentials that weren't expected. Back onto the court, another good shot, Paige Tairoa. She has played very well here tonight. For fielding, Morgan, Pavihi, one way, then the other. Ball inside, Doyle. Out to Mariner. That's a good team basketball there, Queen Margaret. Great sequence. Nearly all five players 
touch the ball then as they moved it around in offense. For another score, and back they come. Once again, two on one situation, and a miss there for Doyle. She gets her own rebound back. Off to Mariner with the little floater. And she adds another two. Queen Margaret moved to 80, lead at 33. Midway through the last to Toha, nowhere to go, needs some help. Looking from deep. Was on target too for Tairoa. Seen her land a number of those in this game. While there's some substitutions, we'll bring up tomorrow's finals in a moment. I know we've had a couple of people asking for game time, so we'll just show those in a moment. Stick with us. Been very effective, haven't they? Tafiri, Kura Doyle, and and Holly Morgan. Very strong guard lineup. Yeah, I've, I've been very impressed, to be honest. Uh, and again, just that ability to play at both ends. Mm. They're working extra hard defensively and really on the attack offensively. Tairoa with the miss. And here they come again. Doyle gets it back, misses out of play let's have a look at those games tomorrow here's the finals so semi-final at 8 a.m semi-final at 9 45 a.m so that's 1v2 2v1 the crossover of the pools a and b third and fourth playoff at three grand final 4 45 tomorrow so that's the broadcast details on sky sport next hope you can join us coming to you live from palmerston north and although we've had some one-sided games today it's going to be on tomorrow, Stacey. Things are going to heat right up. Yeah, looking forward to it. The business end of the Central Invitational Tournament here at Central Energy Trusts Arena. There's this game just starting to peter out now with 4.39 left. 82-47. Queen Margaret will end their pool play with two wins and two losses while fielding as an invitational team they won't have won a game in the pool play but I think as you've mentioned a couple of times they're going to take a lot away from this experience aren't they uh, another good uh, appearance they had was against uh, New Plymouth where they uh, I think they were even at half time and the coach certainly has uh, taken that as a win Jenkins from a long way out and lands another one. Is that seven for <laughs> Samantha Jenkins? It's very, very oh, close. It's a shame we're not going to see her in the semi-finals. Another big shot from Samantha Jenkins. And I, I reckon if it is seven, it's probably seven of ten or something like that. So she's shooting at a very good clip mm. from a long way out. Nice bounce pass on the give and go to Mariner. They couldn't finish it off. There's Jenkins running in hard on Tiaroa. Couldn't put it away and just scrambling over the sideline. Great hustle there from Pinder. Madeline. Madeline Pinder. Here she is again. Look at that. I'll tell you what, a lot of the, she doesn't look like missing most of the time either. It's just a, it's a very, very good technique. There you go, Madeline putting the chicken out of the game. Um, she's a very helpful lady in our community. She referees a lot of games. Who does, Madeline? Uh, Madeline. Right. Yep, always giving back to the community and helping out down here. Here she goes again, Jenkins. That one coming up short. Oh, she'd only be a, a young lady, what's 15, 16? She's year 11, I think, at school, maybe year 12. What's, what's, what's that here in New Zealand, about 16? 16, 17, Right, yeah. okay. So we go to we have uh, 13 years at school here. You only have 12 in Australia, is that right? Yeah, it is. Yep. So we have to take one year extra to learn the same, eh? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to say that I met all uh, all 12 years, but that would be a lie. So, um, 
Well, it's, it's a good sign, great attribute for a, a, a young person to be active in the community and giving back, as you said. So well done to, to Madeline, helping out and doing all she can. Loves the game. Rebound there by Poiser. Hands it off to, to Toha. Brings the ball forward. Turn around with the shot. Sian Poiser. Inside the last three minutes now. Is that a bird that I just saw flying around? It is. It is. Is that a common occurrence? Because it made me look. You didn't look twice at that. No, there's res resident birds living in, the, in this facility. I just noticed by your reaction. <laughs> it's almost shrug of the shoulders. Who cares? I was just trying to see what kind of bird it was. I was quite surprised. There it comes again. It's the little sparrow. <clears throat> 85. 49, winding this one down. Big game coming up at 7.30. Pool A, top of the table clash. Sacred Heart College, New Plymouth, up against St. Peter's School, Cambridge. That'll be the game of the day, and it will be a battle for top position of Pool A. And we may, may, nice block there by Doyle. We may see the Central Invitational Tournament champion later tonight. I know that's an early call, but maybe the winner of that game is the team that will be toasting victory tomorrow as that three-pointer rolls in for Totoha. I think it is, it is a big game. You don't think you'd, you'd probably prefer not to cross over with uh, Mount Monganui. And I haven't picked up any information yet on whether Mount Monganui have won their fourth game today. Looks like they're right playing right playing now, right 45 now. all, three right. minutes to go. I know Conor O'Fee will be keeping an eye on that one, so we'll bring you up to date with that later tonight as well. That's Napier up against Mount Monganui in that game. And no doubt Mount Monganui would have started warm favourites in that game. So as you said, it's currently... 45 points apiece with three minutes to go. So we'll update everybody on that result during our 7.30 game tonight. Inside the last 90 seconds, it's been a very comprehensive victory for Queen Margaret. But at the same time, Fielding High School will walk out of pool play. This will be their highest score of their four games. So there's a bit to cling to there, isn't there? Oh, they can hold their heads high. They've done well. Uh, Queen Margaret is a is a good team and they haven't held back at all. Couple so in the last minute, let's hope they can uh, finish off with something positive. Couple of late chances here to Toha with the nice in and under ball to Beth Smith for two. Takes them to 54. Their previous highest score was 46. That was that game against Sacred Heart New Plymouth. Tediana to Toha. Been very good in the second half. She had that third quarter with, with about eight points and it really boosted her confidence. I think we're going to have a chat with her after the game. Turnaround jumper off the block there from Beth Smith and she'll go to the line for a couple of shots. Let's have a look at the technique here, Stacey. Just a, drifting to the left a little bit. But Beth Smith. Good timing. It's a good camera angle, this. Balanced. Second shot is a better one. Nails it. Puts it through. <laughs> Last couple of plays of this pool A game. Was there contact? No. Play goes on. To Toha with the mid-range shot. Misses. Has plenty of support there to finish it off, though. 28-point margin. Still going after it, Fielding, which is great to see. A foul there on the drive for Samantha Jenkins. Well, if there's one thing Samantha Jenkins can work on, uh, it could probably be her left hand. It's probably the only thing that she hasn't been absolutely awesome at. 
<laughs> was looking a little dodgy there on the left hand, dribbling the ball up over halfway. <laughs> and she does come across as one of those players very eager to learn the craft in all parts of her game. She's been like a, a cat on a hot tin roof the whole game, hasn't she? Just energetic at both ends. Like a sniper. Nails a couple there. And here she is still, last yep. 12 seconds. This is what I'm talking about. She's been like that the whole game. It's been great to see. She has had a wonderful game. Late shot there from Carly Champion. And I reckon that'll just about do it in this Pool A game from Palmerston North this evening on Sky Sport Next. Queen Margaret College running out winners 87 to 57 against Fielding High School. So Queen Margaret finished pool play with two wins and two losses. I don't think it's going to be enough to make the semis. We'll have a talk about that in our later game tonight as other results come in. And Fielding High School, who are playing up at this level on invitation, can certainly hold their heads high. I thought they did a lot of things very, very well in that game, and they will take a lot from their two days of pool play. But Queen Margaret winning that one by 30 points, 87 to 57. Stacey Lambert, take us through your thoughts, what you saw out there, and give us a wrap-up of the game before we catch up with a couple of the players. Kia ora, Justin. All right, congratulations to Queen Margaret College. Uh, just proved they were too good on the day. Uh, clear eventual winners of every quarter, really showing their dominance. Uh, some great combinations with Samantha Jenkins, Tafari Kuta Doyle, Holly Morgan. Uh, some certain standouts in that game. Uh, Fielding can leave with the with the heads held high. Uh, outstanding game from Paige Tairoa and uh, Sian Rowden Poiser did some amazing rebounding and some great work on defense. Um, certainly showing promising things for things to come in the next couple of years. The team will definitely be well prepared from their experience gaining the wild card entry into this tournament. But on the day, Queen Margaret. Uh, were too good, uh, had too much firepower. So they go to the crossover games tomorrow. Um, and uh, we look like we're ready for the interview, so we'll head back over to Justin now. Stacey courtside with Tatiana Totoha. Uh, well done. It was a good game. I was really impressed uh, at just the way that you kept going and going and going. And uh, I think in the end, obviously, just that scoring power for Queen Margaret. Um, they skipped away, but uh, I was really impressed with the way the team went. Well done. Yeah, we, it was like challenging, but I think we just kept our heads up and just stayed in it to, you know, not lose by heaps. Well, has the team enjoyed the experience? Because the four games, I think, progressively getting better and it's an invitational opportunity for fielding. Have you enjoyed the opportunity? How's the team enjoyed it? Yeah, um, it's been good. And just, like, going on tournament with the girls has been, like, real fun and hanging out with them after it as well has been good. We were talking about that uh, during the commentary of that game, just the chance to get away with the team. Some, uh, some days together, especially during 2020 when we didn't know whether basketball would be back. Yeah. Obviously, it's something that the team's really enjoyed. Yeah. I mean, COVID's taken over a lot of things, but uh, happy that we have this opportunity to be here. Well, well done. Is there anybody you want to say hello to? Um, guys, anyone you want to say hi to? <laughs> no, good on you. Congratulations. Well done. Uh, another game coming up for you tomorrow, I believe. So rest up and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Good on you, well done from Fielding High School, Tatiana Totoha. Now let's catch up with uh, Lily Talele, who's coming in from Queen Margaret. Come in, Lily. Congratulations on the win. Another good one for the team. Two and two for the competition so far. And a really good team effort with just the seven players. Well done. Yeah, um, it's been a really tough season. We've had a max of about eight players. 
and we've gone with seven for this tournament, but our coach junior hunter, Troy McLean, and our physio, Gavin Cross, has really helped us recover well and push through and just kind of learn to play strategically more than kind of pushing it through with the fast breaks. And it looks like all the team out there is having a great time as yeah. well, just being able to get away, have an opportunity of playing some basketball again in 2020, but it looks like the girls are having a great time. Yeah, we really are. It's a, we've got a pretty tight group of girls. We've known each other before the tournament, during the tournament, and we're really close. And so just being able to play sport with each other, is having that kind of connection on court and off the court has been really good for us. And is there any distance at all that Samantha Jenkins doesn't like shooting from? Oh, she can shoot anywhere. You can put her in the corner, a metre away from the three-point line. You can see it in all of our games. She's ready to shoot, and she makes a lot of them. And it's really good that when she doesn't make them, which isn't very often, she will always take accountability and come in for the rebounds, which is really good. Good on you, Lily. Two and two, heading into tomorrow. Yep. Um, not sure who you're going to be playing yet. Not sure. Not sure yet. I think it depends on the next game after us. We might be with New Plymouth, maybe? Or Napier Girls. I'm not well, sure. well done. Hope you're having a great time. Congratulations on the win in that game. Really, really well Thank done. You. Good on you, Lily Talele there. 7.30 tonight, it's going to be a big one. It's a top-of-the-table clash, uh, Pool A on Sky Sport Next. Make sure you join us. Strap yourselves in. They haven't lost a game yet. Sacred Heart, New Plymouth, up against the might of St Peter's Cambridge. That's coming your way next on Sky Sport Next. We'll see you soon.